Well, greetings. Welcome to the How We Do Digital Ministry podcast. I'm Christopher Harris, founder of Faith Growth, faithgrowth.com, where we help church clients build their digital presence and engage with their communities online. On this podcast, I have a conversation with a church leader and ask them to share how they do digital ministry in their community. Today, I'm talking with Pastor Tom Soler of Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Garland, Texas. Pastor Tom, can you introduce yourself and tell us how you do digital ministry? Well, that's a big, uh, that's a big question. Um, and I'm, I, I'll start at the outset and say I'm no expert at it, but I've learned a lot of things in the past few years. Yeah, so, um, so Tom Schwillard, I'm pastor of a small um, Lutheran congregation in, um, small but vibrant, I would say, congregation in, in Garland, Texas, which is um, really Dallas. I mean, it's, it's uh, neighborhoods change quite a bit. I would call it city, you know, inner city almost, um, where we're located on a very busy road, Beltline Road, so a lot of traffic. Um, but I started at this congregation uh, la- a year ago, mm-hmm. just just right under a year ago. So the pandemic was already uh, underway, and we were meeting uh, online. <laughs> so it's been bizarre to start in a congregation, uh, not in person worship. So we were, you know, baptism by fire, right? I mean, we just had to jump in and figure it out. And uh, so, so we started right away um, recording our pre-recording our worship services and putting them on Facebook premiere. So that was kind of the, the, the quick start. And then uh, as I got going in my ministry there, we started kind of brainstorming and working on well, how can we do better at this? What are some ways we can sort of spread the word in digital ministry? And that's when I, um, you know, Christopher, I'd met you before at, a, a, you know, youth workers conventions over the years. And, mm-hmm. and I was aware of your, your ministry and, and had heard about the, the process of, of coaching that you do. And one of the things, whenever I've started in a congregation, I look at the website. That's one of the first things I do. And I noticed that our website was pretty out of date. So, which is, you know, like many church websites, you know, um, they can be hard to manage and hard to find people to the right people that are really passionate about making it, you know, look good. So, but when I heard about your little um, process of coaching, three months of coaching to help us build a site, Mm -hmm. and that was more about um, just building a website and then leaving it alone, that it was actually building something that we could use to engage online. I, I was really excited about that. So, so that's what we did. We, um, with, with your partnership, um, we, we built a, a new website, which I think looks really nice. Um, but also um, we, um, we archive like the last couple of, we, well, we stream when we stream it on Facebook, our worship services, it also streams onto our website for those people that don't do Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then I archive a couple of weeks past so people can go back and look if, if they're looking around. And then I also uh, put my uh, sermons, which tend to be 10 to 12 minutes on YouTube and the audio on Spotify. And then we put those, we put those links and a little summary of the sermon on, on our webpage under sermons. And that way uh, people can kind of get, just get a little bit of a glimpse yeah. Of, of what we do. So that's kind of, you know, and we put it on Twitter and, and uh, yeah, promote it and promote it that way too. So that's the gist of it. There's other things, but yeah. Tell me a little bit um, kind of going back and thinking over this last year, I mean, it's unique to have started a call um, after lockdown. Um, so you just described really well what y'all are doing as far as worship. I'd love for you to describe maybe what were some of the either unique challenges and some of maybe the, the things you found that digital helped as far as getting to know your parishioner, you know, getting to know your people uh, without able, you know, can't do meet for coffee. You, you're not going to be able to shake hands after worship. What right. were some of those challenges and how did you overcome uh, those challenges in this call? Um, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> I wish we, I could say we've overcome them, but there, I think it's, there's constant challenge in, in doing things all digital all the time, right? I mean, um, we, we plan 
in the well i'll get to planning in the future what we're thinking about but but as far as the past year um certainly some of the challenges were you know getting people online <laughs> uh who who, were, who normally wouldn't be so much online particularly um older folks who maybe just don't dabble with with online stuff uh, we have even have a couple of people that don't have email so um so how do you get people engaged and what was cool is that i think um, some of those folks who traditionally were not online discovered that it wasn't as difficult as um, they really thought it was. Um, you know, um, they, they were afraid of it. Like, oh, it's, it's digital. It's difficult, right? And, you know, as you and I know, it just becomes easier and easier as time goes on to engage online. And, of course, Zoom has been our, our friend, right, like everybody else. And we do everything on Zoom. Um, I do Bible studies on Zoom, um, meetings, um, individual conversations, pastoral care kind of stuff on Zoom as well. Um, and uh, so that's been, that's worked really well. I mean, it's not totally ideal in the sense that I think, you know, we're, we are, we're wired for connection, for human connection, right? And so, while there are certainly advantages to all the things that we can do online, there still is a need for meeting face to face, and I and I think people are looking forward to when we can do that. Um, so there there is some limitations there, but but boy, has it ever been a wonderful tool for us to continue? And I've been amazed at the amount of engagement that we've been able to continue to have. Um, with our congregation. One thing I love about doing our services on Facebook is that people engage in real time, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you get feedback, you yep. know, and, and that's cool. And, you know, people are commenting on the songs or the, the, the sermon or, you know, um, so far they've been good comments about my ser sermon, but the bad ones, maybe they just, they're nice and they just leave them offline. But, um, but seriously, it's, it's been really fun. They're welcoming each other. They're welcoming new people. Um, and, and that's been exciting. Um, we've actually taken in some new members who, who've never been in our church building before. So that's really, to me, says it's um, kind of a blessing is uh, taking some of the emphasis off, off the, the physical place, you know, going to church. Mm -hmm. um, because we're really a sent people, you know, yes. church is meant to be, you know, the ecclesia, you know, um, the sent out ones is what that means. And, and we're meant to be going out into the world and whether that's online or in our communities or our homes or uh, schools or wherever, uh, workplaces, we're meant to be the church in all those places, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's helped people understand that when we say go to church, um, it's not just about going to Gloria Day Lutheran Church, you know, on Beltline Road, right? Mm -hmm. It's about literally being the church in, in our everyday lives. And, and there's many ways we can be the church online. Because online is a place, right? Yes. It's, it's a place of community. Um, I learned this from a friend of mine who I worked with at a previous organization that we helped people build websites. I wasn't part of that, but he was, and he's in his late 20s. And he taught me a lot about how, you know, people his age see online as an extension mm -hmm. of their relationships. It's part of their relationships. It's not just a tool that we use, right? Yeah. It's, it's literally a place they go. And I see that in my, my younger daughters and how they engage, you know, with their peers online through all the apps and, and all that stuff. And, and it's real stuff to them. It's not just, they're not just goofing around on their phone, right? It's, it's literally a place of relationship. So that was a real powerful learning for me. And so with that in mind, I think that's how I'm trying to push us as a congregation to, to get more and more out there. That's cool. Um, you mentioned, you know, that in the beginning, well, I should say a year ago when you were getting online that, you know, a step was you had to help some of the older members even discover this place. Was there anything special or some volunteers or how, I mean, were you just hopping on Zoom and helping them or was there a program or how did y'all, you know, how did y'all bring them along so they could be a part of this as a part of your online gathering as well? Well, there were, 
there are a handful that just we had to do phone calls. <laughs> they just refused to even try. Um, so there's still a few of those, and that's that's okay. But for the most part, you know, I just I just did a lot of sort of coaching people and saying, saying, hey, um, you don't have to download a bunch of stuff. You don't have to, you know, because people are thinking, oh, do I got to buy something and download something? And I, no, you don't need to do all that. It's it's very simple. And what I did, um, and this was really just to get to know my congregation, is I um, sent out a sign up genius. And I said, hey, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one with the pastor and let's get to know each other. And, and that was actually really cool because it wasn't, you know, uh, let's have a get together at the church and everybody get to know the pastor. Well, that's hard to do because when you get together, I can't have focused conversations with 10 people at a time, right? So this way, by doing it on Zoom, it really helped us to focus on the conversation. I could really listen and get to know people. So once I, once I help them sort of get over that hurdle of just click on the link, that's all you got to do. Um, uh, once I got them over that hurdle, it actually um, worked really well. And, um, and uh, I, boy, I don't know how many of those zoom calls I ended up doing, but definitely dozens. And, you know, and, and it was really, it was really a great way to get to know the congregation quickly. Right. That's nice. Yeah. When you mentioned also you were doing uh, Zoom uh, Bible study, how yep. is that? How is that going? Um, That's going great. We get um, we do that Wednesday. We call it our Wednesday night fellowship and Bible study, um, and uh, we um, we've had anywhere from eight to twenty on there. Uh, we're currently doing a, a study of a, a book that a friend of mine wrote. He's written two books and. Um, he actually, on the, the first time we did it um, in, in Advent, we did an Advent study on, on his Advent book. Um, he actually came on the first night and it was like, oh, meet nice. the author. You know, I made it kind of a big deal out of it. And <laughs> yeah, we had like 25 people on there. It was awesome. But um, so, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been steady, steady participation, you know, um, and good engagement. And again, I, you know, I'm really blown away by um, people's willingness to share in a small group online. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a little more freedom. It's, it's a bizarre thing that I never expected because I've done a lot of small group stuff, you know, in, in churches, you know, youth ministry and all that. And you, it takes time to sort of build that trust to get people to open up and talk about their faith and their questions. But somehow on Zoom, I don't know what it is, in, in these smaller groups, people have felt a little more free to share about the topic. Yeah, perhaps just being in the safety of their own home. Uh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's interesting. I know for me, I am attending a Zoom Bible study right now. And what I really enjoy is that I don't have to, all that effort to get there and get home. And it's just yep. easy for me to sign in. And I probably wouldn't be attending a Bible study right now if I, with my schedule, if I had to, you know, carve out the travel time, making sure I'm dressed and, <laughs> you know. I have, uh, you know, <laughs> folks in my congregation, they don't want to drive at night. They don't want to go out at night. And a woman actually last night at our Bible study, she said, you know, I'm afraid I'm enjoying this online stuff a little too much, <laughs> you know, cause she's like, I can sit here. I don't have to get dressed up and drive to church. And, <laughs> and I said, well, that's okay. You know, it, you have permission to do that and, and it's okay. And that's what, you know, it's things are going to look different when we go back to in-person yeah. worship. We're, we're going to do a hybrid, you know, we'll be online and, and in person. So if you're at home, you know, so. so well, tell me a little bit about, that and you kind of what y'all are planning to do as you come back in the building and uh and maybe tell me also uh you know what is the volunteer structure that you have to help because i'm assuming you know if you're up front it's gonna be hard for you to do all of it uh, so uh what are y'all's plans as you come back in the building and yeah we well we don't have them ironed out totally but we are starting to to work on them um one of the things i think we're gonna have to do is um have somebody during worship we'll probably have a couple cameras going and have a, a switcher you know so we can switch back from different angles in worship um 
and uh, and then have somebody kind of monitoring that. But also, we'll, we'll need to have someone monitor um, the feed, you know, to be there in the live feed, welcoming people, and and because uh, I won't be able to do that, right? I'll be leading from the front, and so we'll have people in the on a on a laptop, you know, real time, yeah. uh, welcoming people, uh, chatting, that kind of stuff. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're probably going to have to upgrade our technology a little bit at, at, at church. Not quite sure what all we need yet, although we do have a pretty good sound system and all that stuff. But um, probably going to upgrade our, our some screens in our in our sanctuary and also in our um, lobby area. I'm hoping that we can put up a screen, you know, digital. And when we talk about digital. It's it's everything digital. You know, it's not yeah. just online. It's you know, your my friend that I was talked about earlier. He talked about what's your what's your digital brand look like. You know, what what are, what are the colors you use? What are you know yeah. what are the images you use? And you know, we're an image driven culture, right? So when somebody walks in for the first time, what are they going to see, right? Um, and so uh, so those are some things we're talking about right now. Another thing we're going to do is after and we're hoping to really kind of start ramping up after Easter. To really thinking serious about uh, what things are going to look like, and I'm going to do some small groups with people online and talk about what are your expectations. You know, oh, um, what have you learned about uh, the church over the last year as we've been doing everything digitally, and sort of kind of prepare them a little bit yeah. because I think there's a good possibility that some people might be kind of let down when we go back to in-person worship, because it's going to feel different, you know? Yes. On the other hand, there's a possibility there might be some really cool surprises, you know? So, and we don't know what all those are going to be yet, but I kind of want to pair people, prepare people's minds and hearts for that a little bit, just to you know, lower your expectations a little bit. Don't, don't think we're all going to get back together and do big bear hugs and, and everything's going to be just the way it was because it's not. Yeah. It's going to look and feel a lot different. Tell me, uh, what, uh, over this last year, you know, I know that you have some volunteers that help you do different pieces of worship production. Yeah. Um, would you like to share a little bit about that? I'm always interested to see how you structure teams to get all this done. Yeah, well, we ended up, I, I do have some great volunteers, uh, some great musicians who are very committed. Um, they go up on occasion and record, pre-record stuff at a distance, um, they spread out our whole sanctuary is basically the chairs are all pushed to one side. So everybody can spread out when they do songs. Mm -hmm. And we also have archived songs that we use. I've got a, a woman who kind of, uh, she kind of champions putting the whole thing together and all gathering all the stuff. And then I have a, we actually hired a guy. Um, we pay him a little bit every week to, to, um, put the video together because we yeah. wanted it done really well. Yeah. And, um, well, you know, I could spend four hours on iMovie and do it probably, yeah. but I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> exactly. Editing can be such a time suck. So, yeah. And I think this is the future, right? We get, we're going to have to invest real dollars into it, you mm -hmm. know, and I think we just kind of accepted that reality and we put it into the budget this year and wasn't in the budget last year. <laughs> And we didn't think it was going to last a year either. <laughs> we thought, oh, it's yeah. be a couple of months. <laughs> but uh, so we just readjusted our budget a little bit, and it's all good. And that's good. I mean, I'm, it sounds like your congregation has really been su supportive of this, just in, have. In participation really have. and financially, and that's exciting. That, um, yep. that it, yeah. Um, so what I uh, what. I would love to know is as we're thinking uh, in the future and where we're headed, what do you think the church will look like in 10 years? Um, yeah. I, when I saw that question, I was like, man, I have no idea, <laughs> but, um, but I think um, uh, organic is kind of one of those words that we, we churchy folks like to, you know, be hip and use, but I, I think it's, it will be more organic. Like, you know, there'll be a different kind of flow to what church is about. I, th I think there'll be more um, smaller communities meeting in different places rather than the big worship service on Sunday 
um, the, there'll be, I mean, some of the larger churches, they can still pull off, they'll still be able to pull off some of that stuff, but churches like mine, you know, I think it's like 80% of the churches in, in the U S are like worship under a hundred people or something like that. And we're going to have to figure out different ways to, to uh, engage with one another. So it'll be partly online. Uh, it'll be partly in person. There'll be some hybrid stuff. So I, I just envision, you know, uh, I, I think we can do a lot more actually engagement and people have realized, oh, wow, I don't have to drive 20 minutes to church in traffic, but I can still be in a Bible study. Yeah. Um, and uh, we don't, I don't know what pastoral care is going to be look like. I, I haven't been able to go into a hospital or a, uh, uh, assisted living or anything like that over the last year, which normally I would as a pastor yeah. to visit people. What's that going to look like? Uh, are they going to continue to limit that kind of stuff? So there's a lot of unknowns, but I'm more, I'm more excited than anything, Christopher, really. I'm excited because I'm a guy who likes to try new things. And I, and I think um, those of us who are uh, working through this pandemic in the church we, uh, hopefully our members have accepted by now that we've got to try new things. If we yeah. want our church to continue to, to flourish, um, we need to try new things. So I think that's kind of loosened us up a little bit. Some of the real traditionalists, you know, who've said, Nope, this is how we do it. I think it's loosened up a little bit and we're willing to try new things. And I, I'm excited about that. That's good. Yeah. We've all been kind of just thrust into this. Uh, yeah. And no more dragging your feet. You're kind of, you have to do it. Um, what about, uh, um, oh, I know this is one of my favorite questions that I'm going to, that we're going to ask of everybody. Cause I just, I, there's so many people, there's so many great church leaders doing so much out there. Uh, and I'm was be curious if there, who do you think we should invite to have on the podcast with us? Uh, yeah. That's a great question. Um, hmm. You know, I, I, I think, first of all, I think you need to get some younger folks, um, okay. some 20 somethings, maybe even a high schooler, you know, someone who's, who's actively engaged in, in a congregation, congregational life, even through the pandemic. I, th I think they're going to be some of the experts really on how do you, cause they know how to, it's, it's natural to them. Yeah. You know, you and me, we had to learn digital, right? <laughs> yeah. We are not digital natives, you know, but kids now, young, young adults now, they're digital natives. So there was, there was no, it was, it's like learning English, right? You just, you just grew up and you, you don't even really know, remember like, how did you learn it? Well, you just learned it because it was there as part of your life. Right. Yeah. Same with digital with them. So, I don't know if I have any particular person in mind, but I, I think getting some younger folks um, who, are, who are engaged in, in their congregations, maybe some younger pastors, um, I think would oh, be good, good to talk to as well. It's a real good idea. And actually a couple, uh, brought a couple people to my mind sure. that uh, we'll add to the list. Well, Now, on the flip of that, Christopher, though, I think it would be neat to interview an older folks person too. To find out what did they learn this past year, right? Very good. Um, very because good I now. think some of our our older folks, the more traditionalists, right, um, they're learning things too, and that they can teach us. So, good. well, um, that's about all the time we have for today. So I want to thank you, Pastor Tom, for uh, being our guest on the How We Do Digital Ministry podcast. I thank you for sharing. Um, about your ministry and things that are going on at Gloria Day. Um, want to invite all of y'all that are listening. Uh, in the show notes, we're going to have a link to uh, our Facebook group, uh, which is a Facebook group in which Faith Growth invites you to come talk about all things digital. So if you can't get in, you know, the podcast is only going to drop once a week, but you can talk digital ministry with us seven days a week in our Facebook group. So be sure to join our Facebook group. Uh, the link is in the show notes. Um, Pastor Tom, how can um, our listeners and our uh, viewers find you online if they'd like to connect? 
GloriaDayGarland.org. That is our website and everything is there. There's links to our Facebook page, the links to the sermons, all that stuff. That's kind of where we want to be our, our, our door into the church, so to speak. Uh, so GloriaDayGarland.org. And uh, we're still working. I mean, we're still trying to grow our presence online, but um, I, I feel like we're getting a good start on it. Wonderful. Well, thank you again. Um, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for listening today, everyone. If you know of anybody that we should invite to have as a guest on the podcast, uh, please be sure to let us know uh, in the comments. We're always looking for guests to share their stories. Uh, blessings to you all. Thank you.